What's up guys, Blitz here today bringing you another video. In today's video, I want to talk about the future of Final Fantasy VII Remake and what Sephiroth joining Smash means for the series as a whole. In the previous video, we already discussed the similarities of what happened for the series when Cloud was revealed in Smash Wii U back in 2015. To put it short, Cloud's inclusion into Smash Wii U led to Final Fantasy VII Remastered port coming eventually to Xbox and Switch, and also earlier that same year, Cloud's reveal in Smash Wii U also promoted and hyped everyone a bit further with Final Fantasy VII Remake being announced in the summer earlier that year. It's no secret that these Smash DLC characters reveals can sometimes break the internet and provide insane publicity also driving sales for other media that those characters are currently in. It's safe to say that it's insanely profitable for both parties. I mean, Nintendo includes an iconic, well-respected character from a game series where millions download that character in that game to play as, and new fans as well as longtime veterans of that character get that itch to replay the game that they are currently in or have released. So those sales get increased as well. It's a win-win for both companies. I mean, look at Maximilian, dude. When a new character comes out or is announced for whatever game he's interested in, he prepares a whole week dedicated to the legacy behind that character, playing all the games that that character has been in while also purchasing them too. As we speak, he is currently setting up a legacy of Sephiroth where he's trying to replay Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 to the Sephiroth boss fights, which I'm sure he will be making a boss rage video for. And what this means to me is that with Sephiroth joining Smash, we could be getting a reveal sometime in January or February that Final Fantasy VII Remake Definitive Edition will be releasing for PlayStation 5 sometime around then. Then in April 2021, when the timed exclusivity for Remake with PlayStation ends, we would be seeing the release happening for Xbox, PC, and maybe also Nintendo Switch, unless they hold off on the Switch till they announce a more powerful Switch Pro console. I mean, they don't want to risk having a cyberpunk on their hands with weaker consoles. <laughs> Shots fired. Sephiroth coming to Smash is a huge accomplishment in itself. Square Enix characters are super expensive, and they definitely retain that right with how iconic they are. But now Smash has the most two expensive characters from Square Enix's IP in Cloud and Sephiroth. Basically, Mr. RPG and Mr. Big Video Game Bad Guy, as Maximilian puts it. That's just what it is with the popularity of these two characters. And you know, Square Enix also announced that only 31.8% of you guys that watch these videos are currently subscribed. You must not have heard me clearly in the last video, so let me rephrase myself. We are giving away to subscribers a free PlayStation 5 wherever you are in the world. I will pay the shipping fees to get it to you. Everybody can participate in this as long as you're a subscriber. Also, starting this Friday, we are giving away channel-exclusive free merch and a video game of your choice. So don't miss out on that, guys. Hit that subscribe button so you can participate. More information on Friday will be revealed for you guys to join the current giveaway. So look out for that and hit that notification bell so you don't miss it. Guys, subscribing is totally free and it helps support the channel out a ton. So help your boy out and hit that subscribe button so he can make your holiday season significantly better. I promise. I know there are a lot of people who want characters like Kefka, Titus, or Zidane from other Final Fantasies, but to be honest, they don't really have anything to promote right now. If they have remakes or a movie coming soon from those games, I can totally see that happening and welcome it 100%. But as of right now, I'm not sure that we would see them anytime soon. Cloud and now Sephiroth makes sense because they have games out now and stuff was announced. I mean, I think that if Final Fantasy VII Remake was not nominated for Game of the Year, then they would have definitely showed us a trailer or given us some information on Remake's Definitive Edition during the Video Game Awards. But, because it was a possible Game of the Year winner, you can't really announce that so soon in the off chance that they actually win Game of the Year. And they would have had the inevitable Game of the Year Edition title for the game, instead of Definitive Edition, which we just may see. Also, it may be called something other than Definitive Edition because that is pretty generic and it makes the game's title hella long. I mean, think about it. Final Fantasy VII Remake Definitive Edition. That's a whole lot of shit to say. Like with Final Fantasy XV's re-release onto PC with 60 frames per second support and DLC, there was a Royale Edition that was released. So I can imagine they would choose a name that fits within the theme of Final Fantasy VII's world. Some possible names I'm thinking of could be something generic like First Class Edition or Soldier Edition or Soldier first class edition of something of the sort what names do you guys think they will use for the definitive edition release for playstation 5 pc and xbox let me know in the comments below there's also the chance that they win another company's game of the year title so technically that name could still be in play but i'm not really banking on that 100 percent Ultimately, they are thinking about those sales and potential last-minute purchases that Square could profit off of 
from full price before they announce the definitive edition with enhanced frames being at 60 FPS. And hopefully, fingers crossed, more story-like content with character solo missions, and also more training room VR challenges to go through. I already talked about this in previous videos with how I think the DLC for definitive edition could work, but to give you guys some ideas besides more VR content and 60 frames per second, the character solo missions could follow parts which were cut from the game. Square talked about this before and they confirmed that there was a solo Tifa chapter where after Cloud fell from the reactor, we control Tifa as she and Barrett escapes and makes their way back to Sector 7. The mission also follows Tifa investigating information on Don Corneo's men and us also finding the dress of her choice for Don Corneo's mission. I imagine with her losing Cloud, we could see her go through some emotions since his dress was something she asked him for his opinion on, which makes her think that he really wouldn't get to see her in it. And in my opinion, we can get some interactions with her and Rude that could explain Rude's crush on her for some great comedic moments to counter the sad moments of her losing Cloud. And then after the Rude encounter, he gets a call from Reno telling him Cloud beat him badly in a fight. So Rude goes to help him find Cloud and Tifa gets confirmation that Cloud is alive from that phone call. And well, it pretty much changes up her mood completely. They confirmed this in the Ultimania that this was already made, but ultimately cut from the game. So in my opinion, this was purposely done to get more DLC content for them to add later during the Definitive Edition's release to pack more content into there. But we also could get Barrett missions as well as Aerith missions too, since she does go missing a lot in these parts of the story. Uh, Red 13 would be a huge want for me, but I don't see them implementing Best Good Boy just yet into the DLC, unfortunately. But they might just reserve that for Remake Part 2. Hopefully, hopefully, it doesn't have to be so far away. But at the same time, a lot of it is done very well and up to a very good standard of high quality for us all to enjoy guys tomorrow which is thursday december 17th we are going to be getting a chance to finally see the capabilities of sephiroth in smash bros ultimate and how he plays my link for this live event is already up so be sure to hit that notification bell and like button on that stream so you don't miss out when we go live 4 p.m eastern which is an hour before the event starts which is at 5 p.m eastern I'm starting an hour early so we can talk about what we can expect to see in Smash as far as Sephiroth's capabilities goes. I will be going back to my roots and making character guides for Sephiroth once he releases and covering his most broken tech as far as advanced guides go. I have yet to make one for Cloud as well, but I'm ecstatic to get onto it and complete that for you guys to enjoy as Smash for a long time on this channel was my bread and butter. I just fell off of making videos for it because, well... <laughs> If you haven't seen my uh, Why I Stopped Making Smash Ultimate Videos video, feel free to check that out. And that has your answer right there. And that wraps it up for this video, guys. Trust me, you don't want to miss out on that Thursday stream tomorrow. Because when we are live, we have an absolute blast on the stream together. But I will be re-uploading the full stream for you guys to enjoy. And also my breakdown for Sephiroth based on what we see in the Sakurai event video. I really am hoping that Sephiroth is a solid and fun character to play as. To be honest, if he's as good as Cloud was during the Wii U release... That would be absolutely insane, but I don't see them allowing that again. And who knows, during the Sephiroth release, maybe Cloud could also get a few positive changes to his character kit. It's going to be pretty interesting to see how they balance Sephiroth mainly because he officially will have the longest weapon and reach in the game besides Min Min. So I'm hoping to see that he isn't too slow and his mobility in the air isn't too far hindered. I mean, the guy has a goddamn wing. He should be able to move pretty well in the air, or maybe they might make his air mobility lowered until he gets the one-winged angel form it's gonna be pretty interesting i wonder how that's gonna work out but i'm expecting to see some of those things implemented to not make him a broken mess guys let me know in the comments below what are your hopes for sephiroth in smash ultimate as i said in the last video i can totally see the tifa me brawler skin coming in but also in addition to that i can totally see the barrett me gunner skin too i don't know why i didn't see it before anyone else think the same thing be sure to like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe if you are new. More Final Fantasy VII Remake and Smash videos are coming your way and you won't want to miss them. My name is Blitz and thanks for watching.